Okay, so what is a total differential? Let, let's start with a function of three variables just to make it more general. Let's say we have a function of three variables, so f, and we want to find, let's say that each of these functions, x, y, and z, are a function of a, another parameter, like we discussed with the chain rule in a previous video. So we're going to have each of these is going to be a function of a single variable. So if we wanted to have the derivative of f with respect to t, what we would do is we apply the chain rule, which tells us that we're going to get the following. That's x dx over dt plus plus f of z dz over dt. And another way of writing this is by multiplying both sides by dt such that we have a differential by itself on this side. So we're going to get partial of f with respect to x times dx plus partial of f with y dy plus partial of f with z dz. So why do we want to write it in this way? Well, this is what we call a total differential. Because in essence, what this represents is a quantity that is going to tell us, in, tell us in average how much by how much this function is changing with respect to changes in each of those three variables individually. So what we're doing is we're adding up the contributions of a change in x, y, and z, and then we're taking the net change in all those three variables. And that's going to give us some quantity, some some way of quantifying how, by how much f is changing with respect to those little changes in x, y, and z. And this is quite a useful um, interpretation of the derivative because what that tells us is that if we know, if we want to find the total change of f, then what we can do is we can apply this formula and then that's going to give us an approximation. So why might this actually be useful? Well, this could be useful when we have different variables changing at the same time and we want to find the total change with, the, with respect to our function. So let's have an example. Let's say that we have a, a resistor and then we have the power in the resistor modeled as voltage square over R. And then let's say that we're having supplying a voltage of 200 volts. And then we have resistance of 8 ohms. And we want to find by how much is the power going to change. So let's call that change dp. How much is it going to change if we decrease V by 5 volts and we decrease the resistance by 0 0.2 ohms? So what is going to be the total change in the power if we change each of these quantities by that much? Well, the first thing we need to do, of course, is calculate the partial derivative. So we're going to have uh, dp over partial with respect to v. That's going to be 2vr. And then we're going to have the partial of p with respect to with respect to r. That's going to be minus v squared over r squared, such that the total change, the total differential dp, is going to be represented by 2vr times dv minus v squared over r squared times dr. And what are these two changes? Well, these two changes are just the changes that we just talked about here. So that's going to be the following. That's going to be equal to minus 5 because we're decreasing, and this is going to be minus 0 0.2 because that's decreasing as well. So if we put the values in here, so that's the original voltage, that's 8 times minus 5 minus 200 squared over 8 squared times minus 0 0.2. That's going to give us minus 125 watts. So that means that our power in this occasion is going to be changing by, it's going to decrease by 125 watts given this change in voltage and resistance. So that's a really useful thing to work with. Another application of total differentials is to finding the total error or uncertainty in measurements for uh, a function of several variables. So if we're measuring something like the surface area of a three-dimensional 
object or shape, then obviously we need to account for the uncertainty in each of those measurements. So total differentials are a good way of actually s estimating the amount of error on our sanity that we have in our measurements as a whole. So let me show you another example. So let me show you another example. Let's say we have a box. Let's say we have a box with the following dimensions. So let's say this is x, y, and z. So let's set x equals to 10 centimeters, y equals to 12 centimeters, and then z equals to 20. And let's say that there's an error in our measurement. So for each of these measurements, there's an error of 0 0.05 centimeters that we need to take into account. So it's the same for all three of them. So the question is, what is going to be the greatest amount of error that is going to result in our measurement of the surface area of this box? So first of all, we want to find an expression for the surface area, and we know that this is just going to be the sum of all the faces, so that's going to be 2 times xy plus 2 times xz plus 2 times yz. So that's going to be the surface area, so we notice that it is a function of three variables. So now if we want to find the maximum error or the maximum uncertainty in the measurements, that's going to be the differential, the total differential ds. So that's going to be equal to the partial of s with respect to x, dx plus y dy plus partial of s dz dz. And, and the really interesting thing here is that we know that this quantities here, these infinitesimal quantities, can be approached, uh, can be approached by, a, by macroscopic quantities. In this case, all dx, dy, and dz are going to be the same amount of error, so that's going to be 0 0.05 centimeters. So now all that we have to do is to find what these expressions are. So let's find partial derivative with respect to x. So what's that going to be? That's going to be 2y plus 2z. Then this one is going to be 2x plus 2z. And finally, the one with respect to z, that's going to be 2x plus 2y. So now if we want to find the total or the greatest amount of error in the measurements for the surface area, then we're going to have the following expression. So that's 2y plus 2z times the error plus 2x plus 2z times the error plus 2x plus 2y times the error. And all we need to do now is to calculate that quantity is simply to input all the values that we have, and that's going to give us our final answer. So the final answer in this case would be ds is going to be equal to 8.4 centimeters squared. So that's going to be the greatest amount of error in the measurement of that surface area, given the uncertainty in the measurements for the lengths of the sides of the box. Now, if we want to quantify this with respect to the total surface area, what we can do is we can take the ratio of this with, with respect to the total surface area, and that's going to give us the percentage error. So the total surface area calculated from the first equation that we had would be around 1,120 centimeters squared, and then the percentage error is just going to be this over that, so that's going to be ds over s times 100, and this is going to give us approximately 0.75%. So that is just how much error is going to be in the measurement of that surface area. So that's a really interesting, this is a really, really good application of total differentials, and it is used a lot in the analysis of uncertainty in measurements for experiments and data analysis as well. There are other expressions that quantify error and uncertainty that, that make use of second partial derivatives or, or square par of square partial derivatives, but those are some um, expressions that you can look up by yourself. But in general, this is the general idea behind total differentials, that we can find the total change in, in, a, in a function of several variables with respect to the little changes that occur in each of the individual variables. And in the next video, we're going to be looking into more applications of partial derivatives, and we're going to introduce the use of second-order partial derivatives.